try our best to give things back to the earth. Be it uh, rain, uh, water that we collect, it, it goes back. And we try to minimize waste as much as possible. And, um, and of course, the love towards plants, um, animals is, is something that you probably cannot find anywhere else. So these are some of the things that's it's a lot different from some of the other places. Our buildings majorly are designed with climate in mind. So we look at large open spaces, large windows. So we let it try to use as much passive ventilation as possible. Okay, you can just open your window because you're opening into these nice large green spaces which are much cooler. I've been in the other apartments. There, there's always a compromise on ventilation and the lighting. And I think one good thing about, you know, the space is across all the room, it's very well lit and very well ventilated. So there is a right place, position of the windows and doors so that there's a beautiful cross ventilation which happens. Bangalore has a it's an exponential growth happening in Bangalore, especially in the real estate. People are building uh, lots of apartments. Typically, Bangalore has a 100 homes per acre coefficient. So in one acre, people are building 100 homes. But then that puts a lot of stress on the natural resources. Also, from a social part, you know, people are living in these really dense, cooped up uh, spaces and the quality of living also is slowly degrading. And you know, while well, you may have all the amenities, but you're actually not living. This is too many guppies you need to take them out. <laughs> no? This it's is okay. overgrown. More the merrier. <laughs> <laughs> is it? <laughs> They'll eat each other up. <laughs> Malhar has been our signature project for the last 15 years. We started 15 years ago. Our idea was always looking at carrying capacity. And then that automatically opens up to large open spaces. People love coming and you know just sitting and gazing at the sky, having picnics, playing frisbee, playing ball. There's lots of things an open area offers from a social perspective, but also from a from an ecological perspective, we have around around 400 species of plants which then pull in its own biota, like you know, the insects, the birds, the snakes, the rats. They're all in closed ecosystem, right? In, in, a, in a certain sense. So they, they keep the overall environment healthy. This is the main road, you come down like this. If you have a car, you actually go down the basement and park the car. And then you can get dropped off here. And you can just walk in into this nice large entry plaza. This whole plaza is right here. And then you have this water body. Then as you come here, you have, this is the first cluster. Uh, it overlooks a large park in the middle. And as you go to the north part of the property, you have the two other types of homes what we built here. So one is called the Willament and Walk Up, uh, which is basically a ground plus two structure. And then right in the middle of the northern part is the apartment. This is the ground plus four structure we were talking about. So you have ground one, two, three, four, and then you have the nice large terrace garden on top. So this is the eastern block and this is the western block. And then you have this large atrium in the middle. So you can see lo lots of open spaces, good place for air to pass by from end to end. We're not having constrained corridors. Hi. Hey, hi, please come. come. So this is our little piece of beautiful house which we have made for ourselves. Early morning, you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock, there's a nice, you know, ray of orangish light which really enters. This is the east side, so it really enters probably the kitchen, a bit of bedroom, whatever, how much of it is needed and also the hall. So it's completely lit with nice orangish yellow and the slow transformation, you know, that really is very magical and it's very, gives a lot of positive vibes in the morning. Generally, we don't turn on lights uh, during days, like only after 6.30 p.m. or 7 p.m. we do turn on the lights. So this is one good thing. And if you 
talk about the cross ventilation since this is facing toward the east side so our main door and this our bay window is like right opposite so that whatever which wind enters from this side it so easily passes through you can actually feel yes. that the breeze is yeah. slightly there so we have a very uh, cozy kitchen a tiny and a cozy kitchen usually it's just two of us so usually mahesh sits and i make some nice breakfast and it's a rice the meat I mean, both of us talk to each other and spend some good time here. And so evening, there, there is a small change in a statement. This place is for me to take this chopper and cut up vegetables, <laughs> all this stuff. Okay, so that's, basically, I that's sit over here. <laughs> yeah, basically, I sit over here. So we'll be having a nice chat, looking at the sunlight, and having this chopping <laughs> board and cutting stuff. So yeah, this he is does actually all the garlic peeling the and the onion peeling. That's his department yeah. in this place. Okay. You have something called as hoodie block. So there will be a hollow section inside a clay block which is used to trap heat. Say generally if you see on the outside, you see a red clay brick, right? So there is basically a sandwich, there is a wall and there is a cladding on top of it. So generally when the heat strikes onto the surface, so this clay acts as an insulation material for the exterior. So the internal wall is a, a compressed mud block and the outer wall is a hollow terracotta block. And the hollow terracotta block uh, does two things. It, it makes sure that you know, the heat doesn't transmit as fast to the internal walls. And once the sun is gone from this side, you know, the sun will move the other side, it will release the heat back into the atmosphere. And in the night, it cools much faster. So the thermal mass of the wall is reduced drastically by using this composite. We are at the uh, compressed soil earth block making unit which we have we've been using for very long and uh, these uh, manual machines that we have from uh, IIC is what we've been using for many years and it's easy to control uh, when the project is small we don't need so many blocks but over the years we have slowly gone into a semi-automation system so what you can see here is actually the group of people who are doing what's five or six of them they make somewhere between 700 to 800 blocks a day Soils which are in Bangalore are typically not with too much uh, clay. If the clay content is more, then you have to add more uh, sand. Sand of, in this case, quarry dust. This is a kind of soil that is good for making these blocks. So because the, these are for load-bearing uh, construction, for load-bearing walls in houses, though, that is why we use about 6 to 7 percent cement. Okay, so this is our sweet little cute bedroom and um, the windows over there gives a very good ventilation across the bedroom as well. And um, one in Bangalore, I think with the burning heat, uh, one thing which is something we really are proud of is we don't use AC. And I think we save a lot of energy, money as well as we find it much more, uh, you know, closer to nature when we don't e use AC. So. Which we are, if you see that, you can see the breeze around, so this is more than sufficient for us to, you know, stay. So, come, I'll take you to my small workspace and kind of an art space for me. So, yeah, I work from home basically, so I wanted a space just for me to, you know, work peacefully and comfortably. So, this is one more corner space where uh, we have in our studio, so this is the best thing which we can talk about our houses. So, uh, all the windows and doors are purely made of recycled wood probably some 100 150 years uh, aged wood which which will not have any deformation or osmosis during any seasons the big red rectangular piece you see is actually an atrium so it's fully open in the middle and ventilated properly ventilated on both sides it's not like a typical corridors of the uh, apartments Most of the homes here have terrace gardens and balconies, further protecting. So you're trying to keep the house as protected as possible from the, uh, from the heat. So by adding these terrace gardens, plants and trees, they are again filtering out both harsh light and harsh sun into the house. All our roofs here, uh, we do a double roof here. Uh, instead of, uh, so we have the RCC roof, which is what you see as the lighter gray there. And then you have the second roof. In this particular case, it's a puff panel roof, which is basically a sandwiched 
uh, galval sheet. Two roofs doesn't allow the heat to kind of come down and you know kind of transfer onto the RCC roof and then radiate into the house which keeps the overall house much cooler at least three to four degrees cooler during summer. We keep the, the scale of the house G plus one because then it's in the scale of the trees right. Additionally it offers amazing benefits in terms of shading, temperature control, you have the waters, the whole soil is always moist so it keeps the overall temperature low. You have very less re heat radiating off the uh, surface onto the house. So again, you're cooling down the house in different aspects, one from the roof and one from the side. You're kind of protecting it from many directions. Walk in only from two or three places. Sorry? You walk in? So also all these large spaces, we also made sure all the stormwater runoffs all come to these uh, gardens and we have these like, you know, recharge pits. So a lot of these open areas also act as sinks for water to slowly, you know, trickle down. What you see, the greenery and the quick growth is because of the water that we are recycling all the water from our sewage treatment plants. So that, that really is nutrient rich water that, uh, you know, so we can accelerate the growth of the trees in a very short period of time. What I liked about this space is usually you don't find such spaces in any of the apartments. Usually it's a balcony or a sit out. And uh, I've been growing up with an independent house, so we have a very big garden. So I was somewhere missing out that factor. And this was something, you know, nicely plugging into what I require. This community is mostly based on, like say, self-sustained characteristics. So if you see many aspects where we walk through the pathways, uh, like we, we use a water for irrigation which is from the STP water and which keeps recycling and other aspect is none of our wet waste goes outside and we get self-sufficient manure and we don't uh, don't get any other external supplies to grow our plants so that's something which is uh, good about our garden space. It's just about the greenery in the house which really adds a lot of light to your living so We loved the house, right? I mean, it's a very cozy and very independent. It had a back garden, front garden. We've never installed ACs. We've made it a point not to install AC because it's you don't need it. We find this place easily cooler, colder than the rest of the place. <laughs>